conservation of energy. First, energy transfer and storage. In programme two, we looked at different types of energy, but let's just remind ourselves in different forms. Light energy from anything luminous like the sun, light bulbs or candles. Electric energy whenever there's an electric current flowing. The hotter something is, the more thermal heat energy it has. There's sound energy from anything that makes a noise, vocal cords, speakers, noisy machinery. Chemical energy is energy stored chemically, which can then be released. Food, fuel and batteries all have stored chemical energy. Potential energy is stored energy that's ready to be released. For instance, high skydivers about to leave an aeroplane. And finally, kinetic energy is the energy of any moving object. Now the tricky bit is that energy can not only be stored, but can also be transferred from one form into another. Watch this next clip and make a note of some of the energy transfers you can spot. This kettle needs energy to boil the water. And it's energy that makes this radio work, or it will when I wind it up. I'm not creating the energy, I'm transferring it from my muscles to the spring, where it's stored until it's needed. Energy transfers are responsible for just about everything in the universe, and they're not difficult to spot. The energy that was stored in the wood is being released by burning, and gives off heat and light, and if you listen, sound as well. No signal in here. Try it outside. Another energy transfer. But where did the energy come from for my muscles? It's been through quite a few transfers to get to me. The energy was transferred to me through my breakfast. The energy was stored in this food. When I ate it, some of it went into keeping me alive and warm. The rest was stored for when I needed it. But where did the plants get their energy from? The sun is the main source of energy used on Earth. Now, plants capture their energy from the sun by photosynthesis, which involves green plants turning light, carbon dioxide and water into food, which is their stored energy. So all along the way from the sun to me, energy is being stored and released. Now, food is an energy store, and any stored energy is called potential energy. So, when the energy from food is released, I can use it. I can move my muscles. And when I turn the handle, the potential energy from my muscles is transferred and stored in the spring. And when I release the spring, the energy is transferred into electricity and the radio will work. Now, it produces a sound and some heat is generated as well. And that's why the radio feels warm. No, no, still nothing. It's not really surprising. I'm nowhere near any radio stations. Well, there were lots of different energy transfers going on there. Let's run through a few of them again. So here we have heat energy to light energy and sound energy. The food provides chemical energy, which is transferred into thermal, kinetic and potential energy. Light energy from the sun is transferred into chemical energy and potential energy stored in the plants. When Stella winds the spring up, kinetic energy from the moving arm is transferred into potential energy stored in. When the spring in the radio is released, the potential energy is transferred into kinetic, electric, sound and thermal energy. Lots of examples of energy transfers. This is the radio from the plane. I've built a machine to try and make it work. Now what energy transfers are going on here? The bucket fills with water. High up, it has potential energy. When it's heavy enough, it starts to fall. As it comes down, the potential energy transfers to movement or kinetic energy in the wheel. As the wheel turns, kinetic energy is transferred to this dynamo. It also produces sound and a bit of heat too. 
The dynamo transfers kinetic energy into electricity. And the radio transfers the electricity to sound and some heat. So the whole system is mainly a transfer of potential energy and kinetic energy. Now only 6% of the potential energy the bucket had is going to the radio. So it's not very efficient, but it's very useful. So we know that energy can be transferred from one form to another. But as we saw in the clip, only 6% of the energy from the bucket went into the radio. So Stella's system wasn't very efficient. What happened to the other 94%? Well, one of the key points about energy you need to understand well is that energy never disappears. It's never destroyed. It's always transferred from one form into another. And in the case of Stella's invention, the energy that didn't pass into the radio would have been wasted energy in the form of thermal energy and sound energy. No energy is ever destroyed. This is what we call the principle of conservation of energy. Energy can never be created nor destroyed. It's transferred from one form into another. Another important fact about energy is that it's often only useful when it can be transferred from one form into another. When you think about it, all useful machines use one kind of energy and give out another. For instance, this light bulb converts electric energy into light energy so we can see by it. This radio transfers the chemical energy stored in the batteries into sound energy. And this kettle converts electric energy into heat energy, which is what we need to boil the water. One form of energy transferred into another useful form. These are really important key points to get to grips with. First of all, the principle of conservation of energy, which you need to learn. It states that energy can never be created nor destroyed, but is transferred from one form into another. So energy is never lost completely, but it can be wasted and become something less useful, like thermal energy or sound. And remember, energy can be made more useful when it's converted from one form to another. Here's a question about energy transfers from a past paper. It's about a bell in a church tower that's attached to a wheel and balanced upside down. From the edge of the wheel is a rope that the bell ringer can pull to set the bell ringing. The energy given out by the bell was originally stored in the bell ringer. So the question is, describe the main sequence of useful energy transfers which take place when the bell ringer rings the church bell. Three marks are on offer for this answer. So you're looking for three energy transfers. Stop the tape and have a go. So what's going to happen? The bell will start moving and then fall the rest of the way round and make a sound. But that's just describing what happens and won't get any marks. The question wants to know about the energy transfers that are taking place. So let's have a closer look. So first, chemical energy stored in the bell ringer's muscles is transferred through the rope to become kinetic energy in the bell. As the bell begins to swing, kinetic energy changes to potential energy. And finally, the potential energy in the swinging bell is transferred into sound energy in the metal and the air. It's quite complicated, so you may want to go through the question and answer again. If you feel happy, you can move on to the next section on temperature and thermal energy. First of all, let's sort out what we mean by temperature and heat. For a start, they represent different things. Temperature is a measurement used to measure how hot something is, and its unit is degrees. Heat is a form of energy, often called thermal energy, and we measure it in joules. The trouble is that we commonly use the word temperature in the wrong way. For instance, when we're ill or feverish, we say we have a temperature. When what we really mean is that the temperature when we are ill is higher than our normal measure of temperature. Let's take a closer look. 
Temperature is measured in degrees, and the scale we use mostly nowadays was worked out by a Swedish astronomer called Celsius. Thermometer would be useful for me to check that the cave isn't too cold for my plants, but this one hasn't got a scale. Probably could make one. The bulb is surrounded by melting ice, and the ethanol has had time to settle down. It stopped moving. The ethanol is dyed blue, so we can see it. Ice is frozen water. And this mark indicates the freezing point of water, which Celsius called zero degrees. Heating the ice will turn it to water. The energy in the water is being transferred into the ethanol, so it raises its temperature. The heated ethanol moves up the tube because it's expanding. The water is now boiling, and the ethanol has stopped rising. This month is the boiling point of water, which Celsius called 100 degrees. Now, by dividing the distance equally between the two points, we get a scale. And the level of the ethanol will tell us the temperature of whatever's surrounding it. So, if I leave this here, it will tell me the temperature of the cave. So temperature and thermal energy, heat, are not the same thing. This sparkler is extremely hot, and if I touched it, I would get burnt. This basin, full of warm water, is at a much lower temperature than the sparkler. I can put my hand into it. But which do you think has the greatest heat energy? In fact, although the water is at a lower temperature, it contains more thermal energy. This is because there are far more particles moving about in the body of water than at the tip of the sparkler. The atoms in the sparkler are vibrating a lot, but there are far fewer of them, so the total is much smaller than in the basin of warm water. So you need to know that temperature and heat are different. Temperature is a measure of how hot something is, and we measure temperature in degrees Celsius. Heat is thermal energy, and it's measured in joules. We're now going to look at what happens when there are differences in temperature. Thermal energy is only transferred if there's a temperature difference between two places, and the heat always travels from a hotter to a colder place. This can happen in three different ways, called conduction, convection and radiation. Let's look at conduction first. This metal bar is covered in a special material that changes colour when it gets hot. The energy is transferred from the water to the bottom of the bar so it gets hotter. The changing colours show the energy transferring along the metal. But what is actually happening? Particles in a solid are vibrating all the time. How much depends on how hot they are. More energy means more vibration. The metal bar is heated at the bottom and the energy moves from one particle to the next, making each in turn vibrate faster. The energy always moves from hot areas to cooler ones. Conduction is when vibrating particles pass on their extra vibrational energy to neighbouring particles. That's why a metal cup full of hot water feels too hot to the thermal energy from the hot water is conducted through the metal to my hand. But this polystyrene cup is safe to pick up. The thermal energy isn't conducted through the material from the hot water to my hands. Metals are good conductors, while the polystyrene is a poor conductor, but a good insulator. The second way thermal energy travels from hot things to cold things is called convection. This is where heated material moves in bulk to a cooler region and takes the heat with it. For example, this is how radiators heat up a room. The air above a radiator warms up first and rises to colder parts of the room. Colder air replaces the warmer air and again rises, so a convection current is created. 
The third way thermal energy moves from hot areas to cold is by radiation. All hot objects radiate heat to their surroundings visible waves. Unlike convection and conduction, these waves don't need particles of matter to travel through. This means that energy waves can pass through a vacuum, and that's how the sun's rays reach the Earth. A thermogram is a special camera that is sensitive to thermal energy, and here we have Femi demonstrating. You can see it on my face, it's different colours depending on how warm various bits of my face are. My eyes are hottest, my nose is cooler, and my green hair coolest of all. First of all, thermal energy is only transferred if there is a temperature difference and heat can be transferred in three different ways. Conduction is when vibrating particles bump into other particles and pass on their energy. Convection, a hotter region, such as water or air, moves in bulk to a cooler region, taking the heat with it. And finally, radiation. Here, hot objects radiate thermal energy to their surroundings by invisible energy waves that do not need particles of matter to travel through.